Hello and welcome to The One Show with Alex Jones. And Patrick Keelty. Lovely to have you back. They've allowed me back. They have. It is a shame. <laughs> uh, we are going to a land far, far away of dragons and dreams, fire and foods. Whales. As we... <laughs> Whales, Whales. As we welcome one of the stars of The Game of Thrones, the TV show that's broken global records. Please welcome the master of whispers himself, Mr. Colleth Hill is here. <laughs> Welcome, Conrad. Thank you very much. Great to have you with us. How are you doing, Philip? Big anticipation, Series 5? Well, Series 5 is currently being broadcast, and then we start Series 6 in July. And you're still alive. As you're far as I know. <laughs> as far as, <laughs> as, far as you at, know. At the time of uh, broadcast, yes. Very good. It, it must be brilliant, though, to be in one of the biggest TV shows in the world. Uh, but you look completely different here then what you do in the show, so it must be quite nice to do that and then people just don't recognise you. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, but I mean, I, I, I wouldn't really enjoy all that attention anyway, but... No. Uh, this oh. is you in Game of Thrones, for those people who have not seen it. Um, I like you more the on the sofa tonight, Conor. Oh, thank yeah, you very yeah. much, Alex. But less it, sinister. <laughs> less sinister, but you do spend more the time <laughs> shaving and growing, shaving and growing. Yeah, the first season I cried and were in my car. <laughs> told me to behave and think of my pension and but, and then since it's gone on it doesn't annoy me at all I just shave it every July and it Th grows there back. it is looking looking very good <laughs> what do we think <laughs> and, and of course Alex uh, uh, you know and myself we were thinking you know maybe later on in the show you know we thought this could maybe work for us there we are <laughs> <laughs> we go. I think it's a lot less maintenance. That's I think I think, I think that's yes. sexy alien just... and Irish egghead. Beside <laughs> that. In terms of uh, a shampoo, it's just go. There's no wash. You know? Exactly. You must save a fortune. Face cloth does the lot. There we go. More beauty tips later. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Conleth. Uh, now you might have noticed that in the audience, as you gazed into the distance, there <laughs> we have uh, we have some footballers. Let's have a cheer from the footballers. <laughs> And we also have some philosophers. Yes. You can cheer also, philosophers. You are time. about to head out on a hen or a stag night, by the looks of things. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the connection, Conleth? Uh, the film that has been released on June 12th is called Shooting for Socrates, which yes, is about is. football and philosophy. It ah. is about football and philosophy. Well, Socrates was... Well, it? Patrick knows the story very well, don't you? Well, well, growing up in Northern Ireland, yes. you know, it, it was 1986. Mm -hmm. Well, Colin, it's your film, you've got to tell us the story. So, 1986... Well, it basically, how the film came about was the director and co-writer David, uh, James Erskine, met David Campbell and said, what did you do? And he said, oh, I was an international footballer for Northern Ireland, played Brazil. And so that, that was, his pre it was his first game as an international he played against Brazil. So the film is about how a tiny, tiny place gets to play Brazil in the World Cup. And there, there's a story about a, a, a boy and his father and them watching it at home and then this young man from Donegal coming over to play for Northern Ireland yeah. and then the squad going out to Brazil. And it really captured the whole of Northern Ireland at the time. And yes. it was really one of the first, you know, g giant, well, I was going to say giant killing. It, 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 it no, did, it didn't end. no, it wasn't. What? It wasn't as successful as eighty two in Spain. No. Hang on, it's, I've uh, hang on. It's history. I've seen the trailer. Well, I assumed there was going to be a big ending. D d well, there is. There is. There is. But, but, but we did. You know, we can't. We can't Let's not give it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look. <laughs> I'm about to do a piece to camera, so anybody who's claiming the Dolan shouldn't be out of the country, get to the back. <laughs> So, do you think you'll be following the lads across the Atlantic, maybe? I'm going home now. The first night ticket, they'll go to Mexico. Look, Ma! It's Uncle Wimsy on the TV. That was Rourke's drift out there, the night jacket. And we were the Zulus! Yeah! I always thought he was stupid. Well, Uncle Wimsy's going to be famous. Trafalgar Square has never before seen anything like this. Ah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love the a little bit with the glasses. I love the wee, wee touch at the end. There's something Mrs Brown's boy is about your character there. Uh, you, of course, <laughs> play him. Um, <laughs> well, that, that's a compliment. It is a big compliment. Oh, I didn't take it as an insult. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm worried about Jackie, though. Um, well, no, you play, that's right, Jackie, uh, the football commentator, Jackie Fullerton. Now, for the people that don't know, to let, let's describe who Jackie Fullerton well, is for people, people of Northern Ireland. 
people of Northern Ireland who for, don't know for, who... No, for the people of Northern Ireland, you know, Jackie is a, is a legend. He's a legend, absolutely. People over here might know him from the, the It'll Be All Right in the Night where giant haystacks threw him on the studio floor. Oh. Yes, do you remember that? I don't remember it, but it sounds painful. It was, and he lived through it, and, and he's a legend at home. It's, he, do, he does kind of our final score on a, on a Saturday evening and has done for years and years. So is it more nerve-wracking for you, then, playing somebody real that you have a lot of respect <laughs> from somebody well, you look he, after? Well, he, uh, he interviewed me at the premiere, and we had the World Cup. David Campbell got the World Cup over to Belfast. And he interviewed me, he said, how was it playing someone almost alive? <laughs> <laughs> he was very, very generous and very kind, and he couldn't have been nicer. And, has, and what did he think of the film, then? Well, did he think told, he'd done a good job? He told me he was happy, so Dan, yeah. I'm happy with that. Now, that 86 campaign, you know, it was a bit of a legendary campaign. It, it was essentially a party. The players went to Mexico for a party. Uh, I, think, I think most players partied in those days. It yeah. was before the, the hugely... You know, diets weren't worked out, nutrition and everything. And so, what was filming like? Was it was it also a party, or did you uh, iron discipline? No, it was actually we filmed in uh, between Tenerife and Alicante to to replicate Spain. And I brought loads of shorts and t-shirts, and it was freezing. It was December, <laughs> so no, not not so much. Do you remember watching the game then? I do remember watching it, and and the thing that I you know remember about it is at the time in 1986 there was very little of any good news coming out of Northern Ireland. Absolutely. That team really Absolutely. united a lot of people in sport unified. They did, they did. And I don't know whether this is true, but my impression from the Premier was the lads weren't... Because uh, most of the squad turned up for the Premier in the waterfront in Belfast and brought the World Cup with them. But not a lot of them realised how unifying it was at home because it was the days before internet and instant news and so... They and, wouldn't and have got that, you know. Mm. And, and obviously, you two too young to remember 1986 yourselves. Well, wow, oh, thanks, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, well, but you were in drama school actually, weren't you? Which was before you uh, actually got into I was, football. I was a late probably. convert to football. I didn't get into right. football until my 30s. I have to say, I wasn't interested in it remotely. So yeah, I think I was doing West Side Story or Greece or something with uh, Michelle Furley and Jimmy Nes, but in the youth theatre. Jimmy Nes, but keeping very bad company. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> things he's a fine man. <laughs> Don't say any more about I, him now. I have a few Jimmy Nesbitt stories. Yes, we've had into. some of them already, to be honest. Okay. <laughs>